dark shadows and in the white cold, fearlessly we search for knowledge new and old. We drink the strong spirits and read the ancient tombs. The order of the Abracast, we are the brave and bold. The Abracast, occult, history, conspiracy, and violence. Everybody, welcome to the Abercast. I'm your host, John. You know who I am. <laughs> um, so uh, you guys might know I do the show from the rusty buckle of the seat, uh, the steel belt here in Pittsburgh. And we've talked about, you know, the Dixmont Mental Institution. We've talked about the missing Mitchell B-25 that went down and disappeared in the Monongahela. We did an episode of uh, the American Sermon where uh, Lenny Lenape Indians fucking fought a civilization of giants. <laughs> um so Pittsburgh's a weird fucking place. It's filled with a lot of myths and urban legends. And tonight I have writer uh, Adam Bacchus in studio to talk about some of them. Adam just wrote a short story that's available on Amazon uh, called Urban Legends. Be careful what you search for. Adam, thank you for coming in. Uh, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So uh, I love the I love the story, and it's cool. Like, one of my favorite comic books is The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Sure. So it's uh, Alan Moore basically took, like, formed a Justice League for, like, right, uh, right. old, you know, King Solomon's Mines sure. and all this stuff. And then that's one of the things I liked about your story because it kind of is like the league of extraordinary gentlemen of Pittsburgh, so. <laughs> right yeah totally um i actually and there's also a, a comic that i like uh was the dark avengers it's oh yeah it's kind of yeah. similar to that that's kind of what i was um modeling it after when i started uh writing it um just wanted to put a little like mishmash of all the pittsburgh urban legends or pennsylvania urban legends i had grown up with like into one little like condensed short story yeah man uh that's one of the things that i really liked about it so did you like grow up with all this stuff or yeah um grew up with it um kind of uh, sought it out you know i was i was uh totally um into you know like horror movies monster movies that kind of thing when i was growing up so um you know, anything that had like the littlest hint of realism or, oh, maybe this actually, you know, happened or, yeah. or did happen around here. Um, you know, I was totally interested in it and I tried to um, find out as much as I could about that stuff. So. Yeah. So you um, you talk about probably the, all the major ones. I think you I think you hit like all I thought. Of, I, I think I got most of them. Yeah. So. um yeah, so let's go. Let's go through some of them. Sure. Um, the first one um, that is in your story is the Green Man. Yeah. And so, what? What's the real life situation with this guy? Well, the 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 well, actual legend well, let's, or let's what? What I the, let's, grew up with. Yeah, let's start with the, ur okay. the urban legend. The, the 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 legend itself was. I mean, and it honestly, it's one of those things. It changes depending on who tells it. You know. But most of the time, um, it's, you know, a former, a, uh, somebody that worked on the railroad um, was, was electrocuted, um, and it's his, uh, you know, vengeful ghost that um, sort of, um, you know, has stuck around to torment people that uh, come across, you know, just, just so happened to come across the tunnel where he died. Um, and he was casted this, like, very eerie green ghastly uh figure wow yeah um and so what's the like what's the real the real deal with him uh if i remember his name correctly there was uh i think it's george robinson okay um I, m I might be misremembering that but um um he w was a real person and um 
he I, I, this happened in like the 19 I want to say like the 1950s um somewhere 1960s maybe and uh when he was a little boy um he was just um playing uh, around a uh, you know like a train track an, an active w- w- with like you know live uh, uh lines and he found a uh, bird's nest uh in a tree uh, he tried to climb up the tree to uh, investigate and look at the the bird eggs, and there happened to be a wire, oh. you know, like across the branches or what have you. Um, and he completely fried him. Um, he lost both his eyes, uh, his nose, um, an arm, an arm, yeah. Um, and he was just, uh, you know, basically disfigured for life. And you know, from by all accounts, he should have died. Right, like, he should have died that day, but um, he, he survived and. Um, from what I understand, um, you know, his family, uh, you know, took him in, uh, took care of him. And, um, but, you know, as he grew older, um, he would, he would, he, you know, tried to have his, uh, normal of a life as he could. So he did try to, uh, like work odd, odd jobs here and there. So people would see him and he, he would take long walks and, um, sometimes he would walk at night. Well, yeah, uh. So what I heard was that he would walk at night so he wouldn't panic people. Like, he yeah. wouldn't freak the fuck, the fucking people. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Because if he saw this guy, yeah, you know, he was, he was, uh, you know, people were, were pretty squeamish. And, you know, um, um, if he ever saw, you know, you can go to, he's actually, he has a Wikipedia page. You can take a look at, like, what he looked like. And it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty severe. It's pretty freaky. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I never really understood is why was he the green man? Like, did it? I don't o- oxidize yeah. them or something. I don't know. <laughs> I never really got that myself. Um, there were uh, one YouTube video that I found said that it had something to do with um, because he had lost layers of skin. Oh, okay. You could see his veins kind of like underneath uh, it. Yeah. And it was kind of greenish, bluish, whatever. Poor um, f- fucking bastard. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Poor. I mean, seriously, can you imagine uh, what his life must have been like? Yeah. But, um, um, so I, you know, kind of all, all stems from there. Um, just him walking alone at night and people turning a corner and all of a sudden you run into a guy without a face. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine that that's a pretty good way to start an urban yeah, legend. Yeah. That's, that's like, that's, that's like perfect. That's yeah. perfect, uh, fodder for an urban legend. So he, um, uh, some other people that, so he kind of has two urban legend names. The other one is like Charlie No Face or yes, something. Right, right. And you're like, well, that one's a lot easier to figure out than the green guy. Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That 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 makes a little bit more sense. You can connect uh, connect the dots. Yeah. With that one. Um, yeah, the green man. It, it, for whatever reason, that, that just always stuck that he was that he was a green ghost. And I remember even as a kid thinking that was kind of odd. Yeah. But um, yeah, I never really got a. Uh, satisfactory explanation i guess i that. just i always thought that it was like it i don't know oxidized him it or makes something sense. in some way like, yeah i don't know uh, i mean i it would be like if you get struck by lightning or hit by a power line who knows how much i mean right volt i mean, guess there is ways to figure out how much voltage is going through you but right you know it's pretty horrendous fucking story oh it really is it yeah. really is um especially if you get a look at the that picture yeah it's pretty bad and you can just imagine what his life you know must have been like but like i said it's 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 perf it perfectly set up an urban legend and um yeah i heard that all throughout my childhood and uh everyone that i grew up with had a version of that story yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so <clears throat> it's one of, yeah well that's what makes a good urban legends sure. i guess is the ver- the deviation and stuff and then when you can actually track down the the real like the source thing, material yeah then yeah. you're like oh then you can kind of see you kind of backwards engineer the urban legends sure. like a unraveling a game of telephone you yeah know? absolutely and like when <clears throat> when we uh start talking about some of the like uh some of the other let- yeah that, that, that's one of the most fascinating things is just that um you know with every every person that tells the story something gets added to it yeah and um you know it's really it's really kind of cool how that how that sorts itself out when i was a kid i grew up in uh Elyria, ohio it's like a kind of a suburb of cleveland okay and we had an orphanage that burned down like in the 
who knows when it actually burned down. But uh, so there's I, there's it's actually even an urban legend around here. I know a independent filmmaker that did a, a whole movie about gore orphanage. Yeah. And I'm like, how the I fuck mean, do you know about gore orphanage? You know, <laughs> that sounds like, you know, that's definitely something that a uh, supernatural trope, you know, like it, in movies and, and what have you. Like yeah. That. So the story is like you go to the this bridge. And so this the story's like this orphan is caught on fire and all the orphans were on fucking fire and they all ran into this creek to like put put themselves put out, themselves yeah, out okay. and they all wound okay. up dr- like drowning and you're like that's, yeah, uh, awful. that's horrific yeah that's just terrifying <laughs> <story>. <laughs> but you can like go and listen to them drowning in the in the oh in the that's water. that's like the legend you yeah. can hear like them oh wow yeah. oh, that's creepy yeah, yeah so i think the the parts of the legend that are true is like the orphanage did catch on fire okay but when you go there just the little river or whatever there's like a phenomenon with a, a sewer pipe Okay. That makes like a like a gurgling or like breathing oh, kind cool. of sound. And like, oh, so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, what? Oh, it wouldn't take much to imagine. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay, that's the kids. Yeah, yeah right. right. I got it. <clears throat> oh, it's crazy. Um. Okay, so... Uh, Okay, so I didn't even know about the Dead Man's Hollow business. So yeah, yeah. So t- tell well, to me about that one. Th- there's the, uh, Dead Man's Hollow, and also one of the ones that I had uh, on there was was Damien's Grave. Right, um, they're right back to back. Yeah, yeah. And the the <clears throat> Dead Man's Hollow. Um, I mean, it's just uh, you know, it's it's a what is it, I think like twenty to forty acres of of. Uh, uh, preserved land and um most of the stories that i that i read about it was i mean how did it get its name like there really is no i couldn't there's no clear cut answer about how it got its name um some of the theories that i um you know read was you know um somebody was found um hung in the woods yeah and uh you know the identity of that person um you know changes depending on who tells the story yeah so i tried to like check on some of these cuz especially this one cuz mm. i had never heard of it and like the most e- like the story that's easiest to find is that they found uh, a body strung up okay there but again it's like everyone's like it was an indian no it was a black guy yeah no, it was a right. kid exactly <laughs> um you know some people it was just uh you know somebody got mugged and you know uh they they just decided to hang him. other people said it was um you know kkk got a hold of somebody uh, black yeah, guy and hung him it was in um, 1874 so the lynching the kkk thing make make sense it does um and but one of the things that i did remember reading was that there weren't uh, any notable uh kkk chapters uh in the area at yeah. the time it's pretty I mean, that doesn't north. really mean anything right. i mean it, it still i guess could have happened um but yeah so i guess that's you know the kind of um consent consensus for how how it got its name but then it's also known for other stuff right it is i mean i mean literally um well when you have a name like that it invites it just shit. invites it yeah i mean it's just a cool sounding name uh dead man's hollow so um but a lot, a lot of pre- for, for some reason uh giant snake uh stories are kind of prevalent oh, cool um uh, i don't know where that comes from um but yeah, like, like, like twenty foot long snakes that it, uh, supposedly um, live there. Um, but yeah, I mean uh, yeah, the the stories there are really endless. Yeah, it's like uh, it's also known for drownings, lightning strikes, and right. gunfights. And right. I'm like, <laughs> that sounds like a party. Ghosts. <laughs> I even I even read uh, like a few, uh, UFO sightings. Okay. Too. So I mean, it, it really runs the gamut. It covers yeah. one of those areas. It's kind yeah. of catch all for the right. weird shit. It's like, uh, yeah, it's like an anthology show. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then, it, I found a website that also said that it's known for its encounters with shadow entities. Okay. And uh, strange um, odors and disembodied voices. Hmm. So I'm like. Do you know where this place is at? Like, I think we, we need to head out there one let's, night. Let, let's, let's, let's take the show there tonight. Let's camp out and let's see what happens. We'll stop and get some Mad Dog 2020 yeah. and make it a party. Yeah, I like it. So you already mentioned Damien's Grave. Right. Now, that was one of the ones that uh, was really big 
uh, when I was in grade school was Damien's Grave. And that is an, um, it, um, I never actually went and saw it myself, but the, uh, I, kn- I knew kids that had claimed that they had. And, it's um, in Moon? Is it in Moon? It is in Moon. Um, it's a resurrection cemetery. That's a great name for a it's cemetery. It's perfect. <laughs> I think that's uh, where um, uh, Return of the Living Dead yeah. took place in Resurrection yeah. Cemetery. Yeah, it should have. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and and the cool thing about it, I, I, I looked it up online, is, uh, well, well, first of all, I, I, it's called Damien's Grave, so, you know, the, the legend was that, you know, it was either... It, the son of the devil, the Antichrist, um, had already been to Earth, uh, died, was buried there, was just waiting um, for somebody to come and take his place okay. type of a thing. Yeah, it's a um, weird looking tombstone. Too. Yes, okay, so you saw it? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I saw pictures of yeah. it. Yeah, um, when, I, when I was writing my, my little story, I uh, was surprised that there were like pictures of it online. And it's, yeah, it's like made out of like... Like onyx it's or like, something. Yeah, it's like jet black. It's jet glossy. Black parts and of it glossy, are glossy. Yeah. yeah, and the design of it is is just real kind of kind of freaky looking. Well, yeah. Well, okay. So you know, I look at these things all the time with looking at the looking at the symbolism of them, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> It's an upside down cross, first of all. Like the way the angles are. I on thought it, it looked like that too. Yeah, yeah like a, the cross bar, the cross part of it is like way lower. Sure. Um, when you look at the ratio of the size, so you're yeah. like, oh, so that's just adding in, like into it all. Right. I mean, it definitely looks like it. You know, has some kind of, uh, you know, um, sacrilegious thing going on there with the with the design. Yeah. Um, just how it looks. It looks very, you know, like, like I don't know, like you would, uh, like some kind of occult ritual which would take there. Yeah, so um, when I was looking at it, um, I was, like, reading the story. You know, there's, like, a half a million websites that are, like, weird things to do in Pittsburgh. Right. So it's, like, um, <laughs> uh, they say that if you look into the glossy angles or something, like, you see red eyes staring back back at you i see i wish i had known that yeah i would have put that into my story i didn't i didn't i didn't know that that's so that's super cool yeah. so the way that i the way that i interpret it is you can see yourself with red eyes okay because you're like you're looking at your ref, like reflection off of it okay and it's like uh okay like the damien looking through your yeah. reflection type of a yeah thing. Okay. i mean that's the way that it, it seemed like it was kind of described so pittsburgh is weird you know, we love our local celebrities so much, and yeah. like they're finding their tombstones and stuff is right. kind of like a ha- pastime here. Sure, you know, like you people, there's people that go out to Warhol's uh, gravesite all the time. Uh-huh. You know, they're like it, that's like one of the things. Like, can you find it? Right. Um, <laughs> my wife Violet uh, found Billy May, Billy, Billy Mays, the fucking OxyClean guy. Oh, I forgot about him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she went out and found his tombstone. It's out. Oh wow! It's out. Um, uh, you know, across the river o- right. over here. Right. But, but it's hilarious because they actually colored the blue shirt <laughs> of his picture <laughs> on his tombstone. He's like, but wait, there's more. It's like <laughs> Jeez, mocked even in death. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, man. Um, okay, so um, one of the one of the things in your story that I actually know quite a bit about is the Mitchell, the ghost, the ghost bomber. Okay, yep. So you know, you want to run through that story? Sure. You're probably because um, I know you did like a whole show. I did a whole episode. So you're probably the um, much more of an expert on that than me, but. Um, and a lot of these legends, I I just did like I knew the story I wanted to tell in the setup, right? And, right. And so I, you know, it was just kind of like um, Google research. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know the uh, Monongahela, uh, or um, I'm sorry, the B fit was it the B fifty two? It was a twenty five B twenty five bomber. I'm dyslexic, so yeah, when I did yeah. my episode, I kept calling it the B fifty two. Yeah. And I re listen to it. I'm like, what an idiot. But yeah, it's a B twenty five Mitchell. Okay, and um, you know, and, and um, I can't remember the precise date, but it was um, uh, World War Two was going on. If I remember, uh, it's right after it's post World War Two. It was po- it was January thirty first, fifty six. Okay, thank you. Um, and um, you know, spectators just saw the uh, plane crash into the Mon. And um, um, next thing you know, there was um, you know uh, military uh, personnel on site. 
and um, there was a, you know, some sort of a, you know, rescue mission for the plane, and supposedly, and, um, y- you know, some people say that it was snuck out of here in the middle of the night, um, you know, with, uh, you know, tarps covering it up, and the other people um, say that it, 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 they, for whatever reason, never recovered it. It's still um, on the bottom of uh, of, of the Monongahela, which is, um, you know, kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> when you, if you think about it, um, but um, yeah, you know, and as, as far as I know, um, there's never been any kind of um, official. Uh, statement about that from anybody yeah well like um so pittsburgh had its own like coast to coast am for a, a long time i can't recall the 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 guy's name but he did an overnight radio show you know uh truckers and night owls would call in and they would talk about weird sh- shit on the air oh, that sounds like a cool <clears throat> show yeah yeah so I think it was in like the 70s and 80s people would call the show being like i was a little kid when the ghost plane crashed and you know my dad was part of the rescue effort and here's like my story so all these you know uh uh, disparate angles sure you know would take it and then people would try to shuffle them and you know make sense of the whole thing because it's right it's hard it's hard to read it's hard to wrap your head around an army plane crashing in a river in Pittsburgh and not being and, able and then, to get recovered. Right, you virtually know? disappearing. Yeah. So there's a, a lot of great, um, there's a lot of great tales, sort of, yeah. you know, uh, uh, like around that. And um, one of the things, uh, sort of one of the interesting things is the theories around what the plane was carrying. Right. You know, so what are some of the things that you, that you heard was like the secret cargo or whatever? You know, I heard, you know, it's, uh, nukes. I heard, uh, you know, the secret, uh, military, uh, weaponry. Yeah. And that was, you know, uh, yet to be disclosed to the public. Um, well, it, it origin the flight originated in Nevada. So a lot of people, that's where the nukes came in. And then a lot of people sure. were like, oh, Area 51, they're right. carrying right. You know, UFO parts and right. all this kind of stuff. You know? Right. <clears throat> Which, hey, you know, yeah. who knows? Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And it, have has it ever actually been uh, acknowledged that they lost the plane? Yeah. It has. So okay. they, um, I believe that they're like, yep, we lost it. We just can't find it. Okay. It's, just, it's just gone. Okay. And it's been there for so long. That's bizarre. The river basically would have ate it. They said if there was anything left of it by now, by like present day, yeah. it would just be parts of the engine block and parts of the um, the landing gear, like okay. the sturdiest metal parts of it. Everything mm. else would just be have been... Um, you know, disintegrated by right. the 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 flow of the the river. You would think that would still be pretty significant, though. Like landing, like a landing gear from one of those things. I yeah, think you could find that. I mean, yeah. So every few years, someone gets an idea of like, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna fund a dive team, and we're gonna go fucking get to the bottom of this yeah. stuff, and they never find anything. Yeah. It's so weird, which adds fuel to the fact that you know, or the story that you know they came and snuck it out, right. Uh, I mean, this be, they, they had to have seen something. Yeah, know, I so mean. there was um, there was a tugboat that was part of the rescue operation that snagged a wing. Okay, and then uh, something happened, and they, it snapped one of the two inch uh, cables. Right, and then it just disappeared. That's the last anyone's ever f- f- ever seen of it. Okay, and then um, I think. There were six guys aboard, and I think they all survived. They all wound up in different uh, yeah, I do parts remember of the thing. reading that, yeah. Because <clears throat> they would swim this way, and they would swim this way, and it took them a while to get all into the together in the hot, like at the hospital or wherever they, they got sent. I wonder if any of those guys are still around. I don't know, man. I don't know, but... Um, that would be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, get one of those guys on the show. Yeah. So the... Um, <laughs> The wildest, I mean, you know, you have your UFO parts and your nukes and all that stuff, but one of the wildest theories is that there was a uh, uh, 300 or sorry, 3,000 pounds of Vegas showgirls in, in the airplane. I'm like, I don't even, I can't even track down where that came from or who 
figured that out. But uh, to Vegas me, showgirls. Yeah, to me that was always the funnest one to imagine because if you've ever been in these airplanes, like there's no yeah. place for a Vegas showgirl. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're like steel rails yeah. to kind of just put your butt on while you're waiting. Like, yeah, that's 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 a good one. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Now, I, I did hear, uh, and, and I don't know where, how it ties into the military, but it, also that there was uh, possibly um, like money from the mob. Yeah, I don't know if you ever, ever heard that one. Yeah, I think um, that. Yeah, there's just so like so much weird. Yeah, like stuff. It's like it's like one of these blank uh, blank slate situations it where is. people could just project whatever they can on like on onto it right <clears throat> that's so, what makes it so cool yeah because you're thinking that you know there, there's got to be a reason that they don't want us knowing where this plane oh, is there's, or so you know there's got to be a good reason yeah there's and, there's books written about one of the books is called uh um uh i think it's called like 30 seconds to pittsburgh how pittsburgh almost got obliterated by a <laughs> stolen nuclear rocket or something like that <laughs> but that was one of the things um uh, people it, when they would call this radio show, one of the things that they would talk about is they would fit these helicopters with wow. sort of like giant um, uh, radioactive uh, radiation detectors. Okay. And they would sweep the water. And people were like, oh, that is why they think there's a nuclear sure. w- missile or something right. down there. You know, right. it's because they have yeah. these. And I'm like, I don't know what a Geiger counter strapped to a helicopter would look like, but right. You know, <laughs> right. Like a big industrial size, you know, Geiger counter or something. I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's weird to think about. It really is. Um, and you would, you would hope that, uh, something like that, um, you know, they're letting people kayak in there now. So yeah. hopefully, <laughs> 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 for sure hopefully we're okay oh uh, one of the, if you look at that uh and it kind of leads to one of the um kind of the stories that is that isn't in your story is a lot of people say that there's a hidden river a secret underground river in pittsburgh okay um the fourth river nice um and w- if you look at enough message boards about this b52 like you'll you'll see them starting to pop up where people are like it's in it's, the fourth what river? it's a secret river it's called the wisconsin river and it's under it's an underground it's under the ground river wow and i was like <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I've heard of crazier things. Yeah, sure. Why so, not? So I started looking at, um, I actually started looking at geographical or geological uh, information. Okay. And we actually do have a hidden, ri- we actually do kind of have really? a hidden river. It's called, it's that's, not called the Wisconsin River. It's called the Wisconsin Aquifer. That's fascinating. So what it is, is over um, the the north side, the point and parts of, I think the south side, there's a giant uh, aquifer, which is basically just like a uh, porous rock okay. that's underneath. And water travels through this porous rock. It acts as like a natural filter. Okay. So it's technically not a river. It's a layer of, it's kind of groundwater. Sure. But it's like underneath. Current. It's underneath the our rivers. Okay. So I was like, that. How come no one ever talks about yeah, that? Yeah, that's pretty neat. Uh, so then I started looking, I started uh, reading articles from like the Trib and stuff. And people actually do talk about it because we actually use the aquifer all the time. The skyscrapers in Pittsburgh, their heating and cooling system is drilled down into this aquifer. And, oh, wow. And they use it to heat and cool their he can cool the giant buildings. Oh man, I had no idea. Yeah. That's it, crazy. It's wild. So it's like, then you hear, okay, so someone hears someone talking about this aquifer, the Wisconsin right. aquifer, and all of a sudden it turns into an underground river. And right. that's got to be where the, <laughs> the, the plane is sunken into. Yeah. It's got, it, it's got to be there somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's as good a theory as any. Yeah. Um, where that thing is. It's the, it's the Wisconsin aquifer or the Wisconsin glacial flow. And that that kind of reminds me of um, like Loch Ness in a way, because for for the m- many years, um, you know, the, like the, the Nessie believers were, you know, the reason that uh, they couldn't find Nessie was because you know there's there's under, underground caverns and and, and underground uh, waterways, and, and when that, that's where that's where he would live. So yeah, that's interesting. It, yeah, it kind of kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Yeah. So I thought it was fascinating because, like I said, it's kind of like unraveling you know, a game of telephone, like, right. Where did this Yinzer come up with this Wisconsin river? Right. Business? And then right. You, find, you know, you could kind of like trace it back and you're like, Oh, 
I, I can connect that dot now. And, and he's, he's not completely wrong. Yeah, yeah. There's like a you little know? element of truth yeah. to it. You know, it's interesting like that. To, absolutely. Yep. Just enough truth to make it, you know, plausible. Yeah. So it's the north side, the south side, and the points are actually built right on top of this thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's where the the fountain, the okay. fountain at the point gets its water directly from this aquifer. Oh, get out. Yeah. yeah it'll make you uh, visit, visit that fountain, think, uh, think a little differently. Yeah. Uh, so I said that they used it for heating and cooling. They use it to generate steam. That's where the... Um, this, the, I guess the steam to heat up the the buildings is um, from this aquifer. Okay, six million people get their drinking water from it. Ah, well, and they probably don't even know. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we got three new episodes, uh, exclusive episodes dropping on Subscribestar. We're continuing our discussion of Crowley's uh, Lieber 4. So we're getting into um, part two of Crowley's Lieber 4, which is magic, the elementary theory. Um, so like I said, three exclusive episodes over there on Subscribestar slash backslash Abercast. Um you can find the link in the show notes. Also, you know, I'm having unexpected car issues uh, that hit me. Per, it's current. It's hitting me pretty hard. It's uh, uh, I've had a rough week, two weeks, literally. So um, with that being said, I'm also having equipment issues. Um, I either have to get a new a set of new adapters or a new headphone amp. Or maybe a whole, maybe three sets of headphones. I don't know. I, I'm having headphone equipment issues. So if you can help me out, if you want to help me out, uh, you could go to um, paypal.me slash Digmata Studios or hit up Subscribestar slash the Ambercast and uh, get a taste of those juicy, exclusive Crowley episodes that are going to be up there. So, uh, it's a, it's a plea. I'm, I'm, I'm asking for help. Uh, I have been putting in a lot of extra hours on the podcast though. So, um, between this and the Sermon of the Wolf and I'm doing multiple episodes a week nowadays. So, you know, yeah, help me out. Um, and then there's all the normal stuff, you know, com, social media links, uh, mailing list, all that stuff. So thank you guys for listening and thanks for the support. All right, so um, this hidden river sure is refreshing. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> so, um, okay, so let's talk about river monsters. Let's do it. All right, so, my favorite topic. <laughs> this is it. This Steelers, is it. <laughs> beer, and river monsters. So, okay, we kind of have maybe a sort of rich history of river monsters sure. here. So, you know, why don't you talk about that? Um, well. The original uh, Monongahela monster, um, which I don't even think is a Kennywood anymore, is it? I know that used to be a ride. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, it was uh, a, a, mon- a monster called Agua, um, which was more or less a Loch Ness monster type of, um, you know, uh, cryptid. Um you know, dinosaur, aquatic dinosaur type of uh, situation. Yeah. Um, so there was a article from uh, Brent Swanser about the. Is it pronounced Agua? O- Ogua? I'm not exactly sure. I don't know. All right. So go ahead. And it, it and um, you know, and that's 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 primarily where Monongahela monster came from. Um, and I kind of tried to take it like one step farther with my little um uh invention um is, is it should I, should I get into that now well or? okay so um i clipped some of this article out real quick okay. um he talks about 
he talks about the fact that there's a, that it could be an enormous turtle. Oh, and he says, uh, Gamera. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, <laughs> uh, he says uh, maybe about 20 feet in dynam- diameter. So he's talking about a, g- he's not talking about a zoological giant turtle. He's talking okay. about a giant fucking turtle. Oh, okay. Um, um oh, go ahead. That's original. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, he also, uh, alligator or a serpent, which kind of is like your, yeah, I had heard the about? serpent, uh, thing before that the turtles knew to me. The turtle. Yeah. It reminds me of, uh, Stephen King's it. The yes. Turtle. Yeah. Or, or like the, uh, the, the dark tower stuff. God, on it. Yeah. 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 God, the turtle. Yeah. Right. Um, he said that there's, so he points to, okay, well, I'll get to where he, he points to, but he's, he has these wildly differing, I, ideas. He's saying okay. it's hard to peg down. It could be this giant turtle. It could be a serpent or an alligator. It might have two heads. Yeah. But he said whatever it is, it's highly predatory. Okay. And I clipped this little thing out of his article. This is this guy's name is Brent Swanser. He says in the book Wild and Wonderful and Paranormal West Virginia by Denver Michaels, there is an account written uh, of by a witness in the 1700s, which reads, "Quote." There is an animal in this country which excites the imagination of all who have had the opportunity to view it. Being amphib- amphibious, it resides in the water during the daytime, but at night repairs to the land in quest of its prey, which are deer. This fucking thing's run around <laughs> eating deer. <laughs> they lie in the deeper paths undiscovered uh, behind old stumps until the deer uh until the deer, unaware of its enemy, passes over him, and this creature immediately seizes him and entangling him in its tail, which is 15 feet in length. And notwithstanding all the deer's uh, exertions to free itself, draws him into the water where he drowns and devours him. Oh, wow. Um, that's pretty heavy metal. That's, that is pretty heavy metal. <laughs> um, and I'd say that the, those guys, they're... they're uh, you know, with the deer population problem, I think <laughs> I think they're lacking. I, th- I think they need to get on get on the ball here. Yeah. So Brett goes on to say, some of our uh, men lately uh, discovered uh, one of this formidable creatures early in the morning with its prey, of which they uh, informed some of the company who were nigh. Okay. Uh, they soon came up. <laughs> came up with him and killed the giant beast with clubs oh wow the monster weighed 444 pounds and they lurk in the deep underwater caves with no bottom oh wow they bagged one yeah okay and their head resembles a giant turtle and woe to any man who chances upon one of these formidable predators unarmed and this is the interesting part he goes on to say the indians call them ugun ugunas or hmm. Aguas. I don't know. I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but okay. I thought it was fascinating that there the there's a Native American legend about this Abs- oh, yeah. monster. Right. Totally. And that's uh, for the longest time. If you if you Googled uh, Monongahela monster or Monongahela river monster, that that is what would would uh, would would appear. Um, okay. That was the one and only. Um, well, uh, maybe not the one and only, but the the primary river monster of the Monongahela was was that creature. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, what, what was not aware of the turtle um, uh, situation. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but and I'm uh, like, how fast it is. Yeah, it's like it's hard. But then the account actually says that it just has the their head resembles a turtle. Okay, so I, maybe that just means it has like a beak or something. Right. Uh, okay. Well, that that could be any number. Of, okay. Well, that's that's that. Uh, we can work with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, usually predators eyes are set up front where turtles eyes because their prey are set to the side okay. so you know i don't know there's still some wiggle room i guess in there yeah and it could be like a serpent with a turtle's head or something that just resembles a turtle or who knows yeah. um but did, the, uh, does it say any like uh, they caught one does it say what they did with the uh with the remains or? nope it okay. just says they well apparently they killed it with clubs and weighed it. <laughs> so, you know these fishermen that have the hooks and they yeah. just hold it up? I imagine like yeah. a big gigantic pulley system <laughs> and someone with a, with a scale or something. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I thought that that was interesting. I wondered if you'd ever heard of this 
of this. I, I honestly had not. That that is not one of the things that uh, I came across um, during my uh, and, during my initial research, I guess. And because it's like wildly different from what, when we start talking about the Monongahela fish people or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering if you kind of conflated this thing with those things or if you maybe they no. Were, okay no um i i mean i i was aware of that uh that that creature um was um, in myth or in an urban legend or what have you um but i it wasn't a um like i wasn't uh like trying to steal its thunder or yeah, or, yeah. Or, or or like mis misrepresent uh you know the one creature for another um that was um just um you know a legend that just happened to exist so you mentioned that the um you mentioned that the kennywood or the monongahela monster was a ride at kennywood yeah so kennywood's uh, our local amusement park here right in, in in pittsburgh so um so you will find people that talk about that where they're like the it's actually this monongahela monster what, what do you call it like Monongi, my, my version, yeah, yeah, Monongi. Okay, so there's people like there's people that point to the Monongi Halo monster and they say it's actually a marketing ploy where this whole thing comes from. Right, right. Yeah, um, yeah uh, it it got <laughs> it's been twisted uh, several different ways. Um, n- nobody really like knows what, well knew where like the Monongi thing uh, came from. Um, but um you know what what uh, originally happened was um yeah so the, the Monongahela monster was already in existence so that was already established at Kennywood and everything the, the ride yeah okay. the ride was um but you know nobody real like uh agua or what what, yeah. what, 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 what it's not uh it's not a household name, right? You know, it's <laughs> yeah. really not. It's not up there with like you know the Bigfoots and the what Nessies of the world. So, um, you know, I, I was gonna my my goal was to kind of uh, sponge off that and actually um, put a name to the Monongahela monster, so that somebody would you'd actually have an idea of what that was when um, you know somebody said that 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 phrase, right? Um, and um how that all got uh, how that all got started was um i used to uh work with a gentleman and we would um uh, we were we were working at a company at the at a time that was uh, kind of going out of business so we had a lot of downtime <laughs> all right i think i know of, what you're talking about yeah 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 <laughs> you might be familiar with this place um and he was obsessed with uh that show um Finding Bigfoot. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, and you know he was. I mean, you know, we we, we both, uh, you know, loved the Bigfoot le- legend. He would kind of poke fun at it a little bit, just because you know a lot of times it's just people <laughs> walking around in the woods. walking around, and you hear you know you hear a, a stick crack, and you're like, oh, there, you know, and that was like the big reveal for that episode. Yeah. <laughs> um. So. You know, we would talk about that, and then it turned into like you know him making up uh, his own uh, cryptids or uh, monsters. So, um, you know, I decided to uh, one up him, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually like uh, you know try to make like a legend here. So I uh, just went to the um, Wikipedia uh, uh, Mon- Monong- uh, Monongahela River page, and I just put like this little blurb. Took me about two and a half minutes to think of it. Like I didn't put any thought into it whatsoever. I, I I just wanted it to be believable enough that if you like stumbled across it, you'd be like, "Oh, hey, you know." Now I I have to tell you full disclosure. Yeah. I had no idea that you were actually responsible. For something. <laughs> had you heard of it before? Well, I've heard of the river monster. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that I probably had heard about this Agua thing. Well. I don't know, honestly, because uh, Monongi, def- the, the Monongi thing definitely took off. Okay, I, I think more so more than uh, the 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 Agua did, um, <laughs> because <laughs> <I didn't know. laughs> um, yeah, like it were <laughs> All right, okay, go ahead. It uh, so anyway, I, I just put that on there, and um, we laughed about it, 
And then, you know, the company went out of business and um, my friend found work elsewhere and I found work elsewhere. And then I think it was like six or seven years later, <laughs> I um, started working with him again. And he was like, hey, you remember that uh, that Menongi that you put on Wikipedia? And I totally forgot about it. <laughs> and I was like, I wonder what would happen if I just Google search Menongi. And I did. And oh my, <laughs> like just hit after hit after hit. And I was like, what hap- What have I done? Um, all based on this little blurb I put on Wikipedia. I actually found a bunch of information about yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and half of it, I'll tell you right now, I didn't write. You know, uh, yeah, it's from so, uh, other th- p- add-ons that people put on. Them. Okay, so this is awesome. The whole, so I guess the theme of this whole show is unraveling these urban right. legends, right? So, okay, so I have to ask you because you fucking drove me crazy this week, <laughs> uh, trying to trying to chase down the reference from the English troops in the French Indian War. <laughs> Was that you? Yes. Yeah. Great. Was that the original thing? Yes. All right. Yes. Yeah. I put that on there. I was like, um, motherfucker, if it's on, if it's in here, I thing. can find. I think I had to watch the last uh, last of the Mohicans that weekend. <laughs> So, like, the French and Indian War was, like, fresh on my brain. And I was like, okay, I'm going to put that in there. And, um, you know, and other than that, you know, I just, whatever crap. Wow, <laughs> just, yeah. That just came, you know, I, uh, the, there, there was a task force formed and people were, yeah, yeah searching for Monongi and there were sightings. The, yeah, and I found yeah. that, too. In the, yeah. in the 30s, yeah. there was a police task force formed. Yes, right, yeah. And, and I, I made it way too long. I made it like through the the thirties to the fifties. So this task force, yeah, was, it was around for a for long twenty time. years. I was like, where was Elliot Ness? Was <laughs> yeah. he involved in yeah. this? Like, I mean, that's just you know almost a, a, its own separate branch at that point. <laughs> well, thank you, um, thank you for this story, dude. I had no idea that this is going to be because <laughs> I ran into. So when I was doing research, I actually ran into an old message board where this guy's yeah. like, "This is all bullshit. Like, yeah. fuck this." And then <laughs> Adam Backus writes back, "No, dude, I I have seen this." And no, I was yeah, like, you'll, you'll I was, see a lot of that if you. Uh, <laughs> I was like, "Fall with a paper trail." Like, Did Adam really fucking see this thing? <laughs> no, um, I, I. It was basically um, once I found out that 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 um, this was a thing. Like, I was like, okay, this is, like, the greatest thing I've ever done. <laughs> like, you, what I don't care. And people, you can post pictures of your kids on Facebook or your houses. Right. Like, I made a monster. Yeah, Take right. that. You can't never top that. <laughs> so um, I was like, I'm going to keep this thing alive. And um, so anytime there was something that uh, referenced it, um, I would kind of, you know, try to, like, egg them on. <laughs> Just be like, oh, yeah, I saw it. You yeah. know, it's terrifying. And um, definitely don't go towards the Monongah Hill at night, you'll live to regret it, that kind of thing. Yeah, so when you look at it now, when you go, like Google search it now or whatever, all these images pop up of yeah. fish fishmen. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so is that you or is that... I have no idea who that is. <laughs> um, they just took what... Um, what had happened was, uh, the thing that really gave the, the legend or the urban legend legs was there was a, um, a swim, like a triathlon, and they decided to name it <laughs> Searching for Monongi. <laughs> and they blocked off like an entire section of the river. <laughs> I would go on these like boating um, uh, uh, chat rooms uh-huh. and, or uh, uh, message boards, I, I should say. And it would be all these like pissed off captains like, what the hell is this? You know, they they, they misunderstood uh, that it was a race, and they thought that there was like scientists, <laughs> like actually looking for the monster. <laughs> so that was, I mean, it it, it all uh, the race really what is what gave it legs, and then uh, it kind of just sprung from there. And I just added to added to it where I could, <laughs> and then I was like, um, eh, you know, what else can I do here? So then I, I decided to write like a little story, um, just to see if that would do anything. Um, but yeah, my mission uh, I, <laughs> that I made for myself was to, <laughs> to to see how long I could keep this going wow. and, and keep it kind of like in the public. Yeah. 
Oh, man, you blew it, though, by talking about it. Well, hey, you know, <laughs> what, what, Wikipedia. Um, they took you the page down, right? Yeah, well, they, they uh, I was involved with this long, uh, drawn-out battle. Like, they would remove it. I and would put, put it, it back. back. <laughs> they would remove it. I would put it back. So how did you link to the citation? Okay, this is, well, this is uh, <laughs> the way you were, uh, you know, unraveling a, a, a basically... The citations lapped my story. I would put it on there just long enough for somebody to write about it. They would take my article down, and the next time I put it back up, I would put use that article <laughs> as a citation. <laughs> and that happened like a number of times. So, like, they kept it on there for a really long time because they were like, I, and I'm sure that they were going, I don't know what we're going to do with this. Yeah. Like, this is a mess. <laughs> he's, he's giving us citations um, that were basically uh, spawned from that little, that section of the Wikipedia article. What? So, um, yeah. Oh, my God, dude, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you just threw this out there. I didn't yeah. know. Oh, I'm like, so I'm so I don't mean I I, I thought uh, I thought uh, you, you you knew about this. No. <laughs> no. Hopefully it's a good thing. Dude, hopefully I love it's a it. pleasant surprise. Yeah, not a, well, I, I hopefully think, you weren't expecting me to like produce my Menonghi skull. No. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, literally, I didn't really know what to expect. Yeah. But it's weird. Like when you do this for so long. Yeah. It's weird how when you start with an idea at the beginning of the show. Right. It often loops back. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's yeah, I mean, it's just weird and serendipitous and there's like sure. an art to the conversation sure. about it. So it's like, you know, we spent a bunch of time uh, thinking like, oh, we're no, unraveling. No, I feel like I ambushed you. I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> no, because we were like, we're unraveling, you know, these urban myths. And right. all of a sudden you're like, yeah, bitch, I'll right. unravel this one right, right here. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, yeah, that one's solved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we got that one under The other one, <laughs> I might not be able to help you too much. But the Monongi, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm your guy. Wow, dude. I even have in my notes, like, I can't find this British troop thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> I fucking fell for yeah, it. That came from. Last of the Mohicans. And, um. <laughs> Another mystery solved. Yeah, yes, that one, that, that one is solved. That's cool. So, it, it, has anything, like, surprising or unexpected came up, came from this in your involvement in the, its creation then? I mean, the most surprising things about it is just how, you know, I'll Google it out of my, my obsession. Uh, every so often, and somebody else is talking about, you know, it's it's somebody has written another article. Um, but then, you know, it started, um, you, you look like merchandising. Somebody's making money off of this. It's not yeah. me. Because <laughs> my foolish uh, goal was to make people think that, that it actually existed. But, um, yeah, like I brought actually I have my, my Monongi mug um, that oh, some artist has made. And... Um, the fo- the, oh yeah, uh, I that's familiar. I see yeah. this dr- drawing online yeah. when I'm searching for it. Right, and the, 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 this poster thing they brought to it's, it's the same. It's the same image, and it's really kind of cool. It is cool, but um, everything. And it's basically a you know a poster of a <laughs> a humanoid fish man. Yeah, but all around uh, the picture of the the character, she's included all these facts. Yeah, that yeah. I never came up with. <laughs> you know, it was things like. You know, uh, hierarchy in their society, and <laughs> they use you know Monongi skulls as weapons in their in their clubs, and you know just all this sort sort of like crazy stuff. I mean, you can get a Monongi tote bag, and I'm not I'm not you know selling anything, right? <laughs> like I said, I don't get any money. Have you reached out exist. to her? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, I, I bought a few things um, because who knows how long those will be available. Yeah, um, but I I haven't, and and actually. Um, you already you already referenced uh, Denver Michaels and in, in, in he one in one of the uh, articles. If, if you look him up online, like he does, he has a YouTube channel and he also has a web, uh, just like a reg- regular web page that he devotes to like mi- mysteries and urban mysteries and stuff like that. Cool. And he did this. Um, he made this Monongi like debunking video. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> He's on to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, he also messaged the artist that makes all the merchandise. Okay. And you know, was kind of ranting on her parade and being like, oh. you know, hey man, I don't think this is real and this that and the other thing. Um. So 
yeah, you know, who knows if she'll even keep making it. But, yeah. but the other uh, kind of cool thing is, and I've messaged the the filmmaker, and I, you know, and this is just speculation, but you know, the the hype about this movie called Monongahela started um, about the same time I published, uh, or I, I, I wrote that little article, maybe a year or two afterwards. It's been been in pre production for like seven years, but it's some movie called Monongahela um, about. You know, a river monster and cryptozoologists that arrive in Pittsburgh oh, to wow. find it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, supposedly it's going to re- get released this year or next year or cool. something. So I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Rooting it on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, do you fish at all? I mean, no, not, no. Not, not really. Because in my journey while I'm while I'm doing research for this, I found some videos of these guys pulling these huge fish, like monstrously large fish, out of uh, the rivers around town. Oh, okay, and yeah, I, I just, a catfish. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, flathead. Sure, flathead catfish. Okay, like one of them was like seventy fucking pounds. Oh wow! And one was I think forty or fifty pounds. Cool. And I just want. I, would you be interested in checking it out? Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. um, actually, because that is one hundred percent what like Monongi is supposed to be. He's supposed to be sort of a hybrid, like creature from the Black Lagoon catfish type person all right so this these this video is from a guy called pittsburgh angler he's okay. got he, uh he goes night fishing and like look you can see he's literally right downtown like, oh wow f- like fishing right oh there sure there. so i fast forwarded to the part where they hook the dude or hook this thing okay um, maybe i'll just scooch it up just a little bit more because there's a lot of like oh bros it's huge kind of business going on right i got it yet yeah, i got it i got it john <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Brother, do you? We have a giant fly head right here. Wow. Ready to bring her up? Yeah. Hold on. Oh my God, dude, this is a giant. Oh my God, this is a giant. <laughs> it sounds kind of like oh we're God, watching a gay porn. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. <laughs> all right, hold on, let's see. And all the grunting. Yeah. <laughs> John. John. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god, dude. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> it looks like he's 34 six. He holds it up and okay. it's just a, right, it's enormous. We gotta let him go like now. Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, here, turn it sideways one more time for me. Look at that thing. Holy that is huge. God. All right, man, let's let him go. It almost looks like a shark. Yeah. And they find a bigger one. Here. This is the same dude. <laughs> same night? Oh, yeah, Different funny. night. It's a couple. Look at it. Wow. This is 73 pound catfish just swimming around in the river. That's crazy. It's cool they let him go. Yeah. Look at it. Wow, from that from that angle, you yeah. can really tell. Like I him mean, just like, holding it up, his gigantic. entire length of his body. Yeah. That's crazy. And then um, I found a thing for a guy who caught a paddlefish. I think is what it's called. Birds to fish an angler reeled in. This is from KDKA. Like this is right here. Nice. He caught this thing near a dam in Armstrong County, and Dave. Crowley. There's some weird shit swimming around in our rivers. Oh yeah, and it's you know. Look at this you can't tell what's underneath you. It's brown. To fish in out of the way places, and Lock Nine on the Allegheny River, south of East Brady, fits the bill perfectly. The Ford City fisherman has angled for an assortment of catches over the years. You catch catfish, smallmouth, muskies, walleyes, but nothing like the creature he reeled in on Tuesday. Just took off. What Look this at this thing. thing is. Wow. Some thought it was a prehistoric monster, which, when you come down to it... They've been around for 75 million years, they claim. Wow. There's people that swim in this fucking river. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that thing could just chomp your leg right off. Look at, it, Look at that thing. Wow. It's so fucking weird looking. It is. Oh, my God. Ugh. So, um, yeah, so where can people go to get your 
your your story that you wrote. Well, uh, the story uh, it's still on Amazon. It's just uh, you know like a um, you know a Kindle book. Cool. Um, that you can you know I think it's two ninety nine or something. Um, just a short story. You know, just something I I, I put together just to try to I don't know do something else. Yeah, it's fun. with this uh, thing other than. Um, you know, try to make people write about it. <laughs> I figured I'd write, my, I'd write about it myself. So, if anybody out there wants to talk to you about this Monongahela monster, can they reach out to you like on Facebook or Twitter? Yeah, or something? Um, I actually have um, like a, a horror movie group, um, and that's probably um, the best way to reach me. To be honest, um, it's the uh, just called the uh, the horror movies of the '60s, '70s, '80s, and '90s. And, um, you know, they can either uh, message me there or, um, yeah, probably just send me a message there. And, cool. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, hey, I like the story. Thanks. And I, I liked <laughs> sitting down and talking with you and your revelation. Yeah. I'm still kind of like, what? It's hilarious. The notes, the notes went out the window. Went, yeah, went the- like, okay. <laughs> no, dude, but it would fit perfectly. Like, it just, I mean, it really worked and everything. So yeah. thank you so much. No, I appreciate it. It was uh, fun talking about it. Sweet, man. All right. Okay. All right. We're done. Uh, I got to. Just a reminder about the these three exclusive new episodes on Subscribestar. So there's 14, 15, 16, 17. There's like 17 or 18 exclusive episodes on Subscribestar now. Uh, and there's only one tier. It's $3 tier. It's $3 you're not even going to miss. Um, we're continuing uh, our discussion of Crowley's Libra 4. We're talking about magic, elementary theory in these three episodes. So just a quick reminder. I've had... So, <laughs> I'm getting car fucked <laughs> and not in a good way uh had some unexpected car problems that hit me pretty hard and I'm also having a problem with my podcast equipment so if you guys can, if you feel like helping out you know i'm putting a lot of extra hours in a lot of a lot of extra shows lately um so if you feel like helping me out you know go to paypal.me slash stigmata studios or just hit me up on subscribe star and uh get a piece of those uh, juicy episodes. <clears throat> and then, you know, uh, there's also the normal stuff. Visit the, the website, the, sign into the mailing list, find my social media links, and yada, yada, yada.